let's take a look at Blocks 5 user interface. When you open the app, you can see this welcome screen. From here, you can access documentation, academy, community, and block store. On the right side, you have the list of the recent projects, as well as two buttons to open any project on your computer or create a new one. Let's create a new project. In Blocks 5, we have a choice between starting from a site template or from empty page. If you select the empty page, it will ask you for the site name, web address, the default language for your website, framework, you can choose between Bootstrap 5 and Bootstrap 4, but keep in mind, if you select the Bootstrap 4 here, you can upgrade to 5, but you cannot downgrade from 5 to 4. You can change the page type or CMS if you plan on building the WordPress theme, for example. But don't stress out a lot because you can change all of these settings later in the project settings. So you can just type the name and click done. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to start from a site template. So the new big feature of Blocks 5 is site templates. It allows you to start your projects from a template and there is a number of them included for free. You can preview them from here, click on different pages. If you don't like it, you can close the preview and choose another one. And as you can see, I have also loaded a number of my own templates. So let's use this one. It will ask you the website name. Some templates will allow you to type the name and you can see it is in the logo area automatically. You can upload the logo and you can change the default colors, which is very cool. Using the new color management system we have in Blocks 5. Of course, I will show you in detail how to use this new color system in this course. So after we choose colors, we can choose fonts and that's basically it. And as you can see, the colors have been applied to pretty much everything, including the icons, buttons and even the hover effects for the links. Very cool. Okay, enough about the templates. Let's take a look at the user interface elements we have in Blocks 5. In addition to the working canvas in the middle, we have two sidebars. On the left, we have layer navigator or layer tree. And we have the page navigator, which is the second tab here. On the right side, we have inspector, which is the place where will happen most of the editing of our website. If we select any element on the canvas, the inspector will adjust what it's showing us and some things like spacing or effects or animations, for example, they will appear for every element or every block, but some things like, for example, the sizing for the images or the type for the icon will appear when you select the icon. But spacing, as you can see, it's everywhere. In the upper part of the inspector, you have a place to add an ID to any element or classes, which we will use all the time. To add a class, you just select the element and type the name here. For example, this image already has some class added. It, I think it is for the shadow. And under the classes, we have the visibility options. We will take a look at this later when we build our website. But basically, it will allow you to change visibility for some elements for some specific breakpoints. In the bottom part of the inspector, we have shortcuts to things like class manager, a place where we have all of the classes used in this project. In addition to that, we have the asset manager. There's all of the images, PDF files, and other documents we use in our project global swatches which are the colors we're using for pretty much everything on our website of course we will cover that in a separate video we have menu manager which is the place where we can adjust the menu project notes and academy shortcut the same one we had on the welcome screen in the top right corner we also have the zoom and export shortcut to publish or export our website to the computer or directly to the hosting account. We will of course cover all of that 
in a separate video, I think it will be one of the last ones in this part. Let's switch to the layer tree on the left. And layer tree is basically the skeleton for a website. When you click on some element, it will show you where it is in the layer tree. At the same time, when you select something in the layer tree, for example, this card, it will scroll down to this card and show it to you on the canvas. We can also change a couple of settings. For example, scroll to the element is the one we just used. We can also include the IDs in the layer tree. And the ID, of course, we can set it here in the inspector. We can include classes. For example, this image has some class applied, as you can see here. And if we want, we can disable the option and it will be a little bit cleaner in the layer tree, but I like to keep them there. And solo mode is something I don't recommend to use. It's kind of pointless in my opinion. We can expand all of the elements in our layer tree. We can actually make it wider as well. And this button will collapse everything so we only see the blocks. So when we select something, it will show us here. And the good thing is we can rearrange the elements using the layer tree. So for example, we can select this column and move it somewhere here. Or we can select the element and move it not just inside the same column or same block. We can actually select something in one block and move it to the other block like this. We can delete the whole blocks. We can add them to block library. We can move them to another page or duplicate from layer tree. Above the layer tree, we have the drop down menu for quickly switching between the pages. In blocks four, this drop down menu was in top right corner, but I think that this position is actually better, but of course, you need to get used to it. Next to layer tree, we have page navigator with built in search, which instantly show us the page when we type the name of it. We can also delete pages from here. We can access the page settings or duplicate the pages. We can rearrange them if we want. We also have this plus icon here, which allows us to add new pages to our project, which we will do later in the different parts of this course. So new in blocks five, we have the master menu in the middle of the screen, which combines the menus, breakpoint control and preview button. The menu icon gives you access to all types of settings for our website, project settings, page settings, canvas settings, project overview, font manager and extension manager. I will cover in detail all of this in the next video, but for canvas settings, which are also available here in the bottom left corner, let me quickly show you that it has a couple of modes, for example, for dark side mode, outline mode or wireframe mode for people who need this. There's also the visual impairment feature included as well. In the middle, we have the drop down menu for breakpoint control, which allows us to switch between the medium, small, extra small and large breakpoints which simulate the different device sizes. Next to this, we have the preview button, which will give us the live preview of our website. And it is quite faster in blocks five compared to what it was in blocks four, which was also very fast. We can switch between the pages here. By clicking on this little icon, we can copy the address, which we can paste on the our phone, for example, which is on the same local network and preview our website live on other devices on the same network. Also we have this handle here, which is very handy when you want to dynamically resize your working canvas and see how your website responds. And again, we can switch between the breakpoints even when we are inside the preview mode.